Let's take a look at the updates for Haggis Tools. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now I've made some significant changes to Haggis Tools 1.14. I've implemented a lot of new quality of life tools to be honest. Now one of my favourite is Select by Polygon Count. What does it do? Well, it selects the object by a polygon count. So if we go to Selection Tools, you can see here Select by Polygon Count. Now we have smaller or equal to or larger or equal to. So I know for example the cube is 6 polygons, so if I hit 6 I can do smaller or equal to and it will select everything with 6 polygons or lower. Pretty much in the opposite when it comes to larger. So let's say for example we want to select objects with more than 32 polygons, we can go to 32 larger or equal. Perfect and we can easily deselect all as well. So that's a nice little tool, especially when you're dealing with CAD models and you know, for example, a wing nut is 40 polygons, but you've got millions of them in the scene. So this is where select by polygon count comes in pretty handy, to be honest. Now in terms of selection tools, I've actually implemented quite a few. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move this cube onto the negative Y, just to give you an example. So I can go to selection tools, I can select things on a negative scale. So if it's been scaled in a negative, I can select it. I can select on a negative X, Y and Z location. So I know for example this cube is on the negative Y. Let me just quickly drop the tool. I can go to select, select on the negative Y and it will select all the objects that sit on a negative value. Now, this is great if you're doing things like mirroring, stuff like this. Comes in exceedingly handy. I've also added select, disabled and render. So let's say for example the echo sphere and the sphere is disabled in the render engine. I'll just drop the tool again. I'll go to Selection Tool, Select Disabled and Render. And this is just a very quick way to select objects that have been disabled in the render engine. And it pretty much echoes the same for Holdout. So for example, if I go to Selection Tools, Select Objects with a Holdout. So if you've applied a Holdout to the object, it will select all of the objects. We also have the True Random Mesh Select. I've moved that into the new menu. Now when it comes to the UI, a user requested would it be possible to save these in the Preferences. So rather than UI toggles getting saved scene by scene, they now get saved in your preferences. So you, what you can do is you can go to edit preferences and you can see here we can toggle things on and off nice and easily. And it kind of cleans up your UI just a little bit as well. You also have the secondary option where you can go to the interface options and you can disable it here and that gets saved with your preferences. Now in case you don't actually have your saved preferences auto save, what you can actually do now is go to system tools. And you can save the preferences for here. It's, it's just a quick shortcut to be honest. It's, it's not going to change your life. Now regarding user requests, a user actually asked, would it be possible to apply the transformation then flip the normals? Now there is a reason behind this. So let's say for example we just duplicate this cube and we put the scale to negative one. Now generally what happens here is if you apply a transformation for example, it flips the normals. So you then need to go into edit mode, you then need to correct the normals, stuff like this. So I made a tool that kind of makes it one click solution. There's actually two tools. There's one that does it in selected objects, it'll apply the transformation then flip. And there's one that'll actually look for a negative scale value. So you can see here, this is actually on the negative. I can go to selection tools and I can go select apply flip. That'll automatically apply the transformation and you can see here it's fixed the normals. So hopefully that kind of fixes one of the user problems. Now when it comes to flipping normal, sometimes it can be a little bit unpredictive. I don't know if it's because of active or selected objects, but just as a kind of quick thing, we can flip selected normals inside of object mode. So as you can see here, if I go to flip selected, it quickly drops you into edit mode, flips the normals and drops you back into object mode. And because it's only a small object, you don't actually notice the operation. So just quickly wrapping up this video, I implemented another feature that a user requested and it was color collections. So let's take all of these colors off the collections. What we can then do is, even with the tool deselected, we can go to Haggis tools, we can go to collection tools and you can see here color collections. And it'll color the collection individually. So we'll actually cycle through the colors from 1 to 8 I believe and then it'll go back around to 1 to 8 depending on how many collections you actually have. So let's quickly take off the color and let's assign these bottom three collections a color. Now the reason I would like to demonstrate this is if you have something already colored in your collection it won't overwrite it. So if I go to collection tools, colored collections, you can see here it'll randomly assign the color but it'll also keep what you've made. So this is a good way not to overwrite 
your previous colour collections. Because I know a lot of users, they might do like green for mesh objects, red for whatever. So that is pretty much colour collections and that is pretty much the updates for version 1.14. There is a few other kind of things hidden in there, but they're the main ones to be honest. If you have any suggestions or something that you might like to see implemented, I'm more than happy to kind of try and help out to be honest. Uh, do me a favour guys, you can get this on Gumroad and you can get it on Blender Market. Take care.